this is loud, my room is also too quiet. And I know this mixer thing are already deep enough mixer, so we're just gonna go with it this way. There's gonna be a slight loss of quality. But oh. Okay. Unfortunately, this game has kind of long loading screens, uh, even though it's not super big or graphical intensive. But it, it, the loading screens aren't bad enough to nitpick about. It doesn't even load that often. Um, this is a very cool vertically scrolling shoot 'em up I found, made by a small studio. And quick review, uh, I like it because it has four different characters that have uh, very different styles to them and the way they shoot and their special abilities. I like it that it has uh, options in terms of difficulty. This is one of the best shoot 'em ups I've played in terms of like easing players in uh, to what we call bullet hell. Because at the easier difficulties, there's literally less bullets on screen and they move slower. And as you go into the higher difficulties, there's more stuff on screen and it moves faster. But the patterns stay relatively similar, so it's a nice learning curve um, for people that are hardcore into shoot 'em ups. It offers. Uh, you know, you can put the difficulty as high as you want, you can play it in arcade mode where there's uh, no persistent upgrades and you can just choose not to get the upgrades between levels. Uh, for people that like more of like a progression to their game or that are like newer to shooters, uh, there are persistent upgrades here. They have general ones that apply to all the characters and then they have specific ones per character that change or upgrade some of their abilities. And each time you play the campaign, you earn points that you can either use to buy more health or energy between levels or you can save it until your run is completed or you lose your life and die and you can use those points to buy these persistent upgrades so I think that's a really cool option and it's the best of all worlds it, it satisfies everyone from people that are new to shooters that want kind of like progression that don't have a lot of time to play it also satisfies people that are hardcore and just shoot em ups because when you play this at the higher difficulties, uh, it delivers. It, it still wouldn't be the hardest shooter out there by far, but it's hard enough, requires enough precision that it's good. Um, my only quibbles with the game... Originally, the graphics seemed like a quibble to me. When I first saw this on Xbox, I didn't buy it because the graphics look kind of like bad, cheap vector graphics. But once I looked at it further and I read some of the reviews, I decided to play it for myself. Uh, the graphics aren't bad at all. The graphics serve, uh, you can tell what everything is, and even on a busy field, um, nothing's obscured, nothing blends in too much, and they're not bad at all, so I wouldn't call the graphics quibble anymore. Um, some of the music is forgettable, and the only reason I mention that is because in shoot 'em ups music can be pretty important, since you get into kind of a zone where um, you're, you're just sort of watching your hitbox and the patterns of bullets. So you need the music to kind of be good to help get you in that zone. Uh, and so you, the music here isn't really bad. There's one level I kind of hate the music, but none of the music is bad. It's just forgettable. Uh, my only other quibble would be that this game doesn't support Tate mode, which is when you can rotate your display uh, 90 degrees one way or the other and make it so the vertical field is now horizontal, which gives you much bigger play space and the controls would uh, accommodate that, accommodate the rotation, so that way, like, if you're pressing up on your D-pad, your character would be going left on the actual game screen, but it looks like up to you because it's rotated. Um, this game, unfortunately, does not support that, and that's a shame because the playing field is very small, and there's kind of a lot of extraneous information on, on the sides that you don't necessarily need, and I could especially b see that being a big deal in the local co-op mode where you have uh, two people playing. It seems like the screens will be busy and smaller and even zoomed out so you need that much more play space. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get into it. Like I said, there's four characters to this game. Um, one of them, named Shin, I kind of don't like so I'm going to save him for dead last and arcade mode. I'm going to start out with the story of the other three characters I do like. First character I'm going to show is going to be Echo. So this is her story. Mask Industries used to be the biggest robot maker in the world. It produced 90% of the world's intelligent machines. 
My father founded the company, but he was gunned down by his friend. Grandpa, my only living relative, took me to live in the countryside for my safety, away from the glamour and clamour of the big cities. Until three years ago, when he mysteriously disappeared. I know he would never just up and leave me. Something must have happened. The Robot Rebellion is the biggest disaster in human history. But there are some who say it's man-made. Grandpa's disappearance has led the public to believe that our family has something to do with the Rebellion. And it's Grandpa taking his revenge. Okay, so that was the introduction story mode for Echo. Uh, first thing, I'm going to play her in the campaign. One of the unique things about this game is there's multiple difficulty levels. Um, I'm going to start out playing her on noob mode just to show you. Uh, some of the levels, the order of them actually changes between difficulties, uh, as well as some of the enemy and bullet patterns. So I'm going to start her on noob just so it's a quicker playthrough. As you're playing this game, you don't actually start getting story elements until normal and veteran difficulties. And you can actually pick up additional story clips after the initial CG. So I'll show some of those later. But I'm going to go ahead and start with Echo on lowest difficulty. And let me go ahead, let's see, I'll do the tutorial. Because it's going to illustrate some of the control concepts they have going on here that... I feel like make this a unique shoot 'em up in some ways. They're pretty cool. Target scan. Oh, that's interesting. And you have to use Asmo for the tutorial. Okay, so first thing, uh, it introduces you to just dodging. Pretty basic. Press and hold RT will switch you to high speed mode for better evasion. So you hold down the right trigger, and suddenly you can move uh, much faster. And that also depends on the character. Like Asimo, it's only a slight increase, because this is normal, this is slow, this is fast. So for Asimo, it doesn't make a huge difference. On um, Echo and Sam Hill characters, it makes a much bigger difference. That's another one of the things I like about it, that there's a lot of differentiation between the characters. Uh, okay, so, now I want me to actually shoot him. This is your basic gun. Uh, the shot patterns also change a lot between characters. Asimo's starts in kind of that V shape, which means you're going to be doing more damage if you're up close to an enemy, <coughs> rather than further away, because more stuff hits them. It says you can also shoot by pressing the B button, or you can hold that to charge. So if you look down at the bottom left, over here to the left of my character, you'll see those uh, empty rectangles. If you hold down B like this, they start filling up. So when you hold these down, that's what you use to do your special abilities. Everyone has two. The dashboards to your left and right are displaying how many times you can use them. So I can do this one. That uses up two energy brackets. I can do this one. Oh no, it's not going to let me do that one yet. Charge up. It says press RB to cast Chain Lightning. So his other special is a Chain Lightning. It's that one that uses four. So part of the risk-reward of this game is if you're going to be using your regular gun to just destroy enemies, or if you're going to be holding down B like this to charge up that energy and use that to hit special abilities and enemies drop this stuff that may recharge more special abilities. Uh, the rest of this is about scoring. It says you earn special kill and rank by destroying enemies with your special abilities. So, like,
Like if I throw that right there, you'll see those purple things are energy, and the silver star things turn up my combo bonus. It's so all that, uh, like right here, you can see special kill rank is 3x. Uh, if I kill some more, I can get that up to like 4x, 5x, I think is the max. And that scoring also means that the next few enemies you destroy with that high combo meter, when you destroy enemies with your special abilities, you get back more energy. So uh, once you get some upgrades and you get good at comboing, you can basically make it where instead of even using your basic gun, you can pretty much just be using special abilities the whole time. <coughs> and besides getting you more points, um, using energy also builds up your bomb meter, which you see down here. Whenever you fill that up, you get more energy and time has been gone. see right there you see uh, there's a bar that says 0 of 51 now, if I do this that's gonna use two energy brackets to fire that laser but it also puts two into my bomb meter so two of 51 once I fill that up to 51 that's gonna give me another bomb so that's how you acquire bombs in this game and like most shooter mups uh, they're screen clearing bombs and they also stop enemy bullets which that's kind of the important part even more useful than the bombs, uh, you know, clearing out enemies for you. It's pretty easy enough to just clear enemies with your regular shots on most characters, but clearing them either with special abilities to get more points or using energy to get more bombs and stopping bullets, that's what you're going for. Okay, so I think right now the tutorial wants me to spend enough special energy to build up another bomb. And some of the persistent upgrades you can get uh, will actually change some of the aspects of your special weapons. Like they may cost more energy but do more damage, uh, they may stay on the screen longer, things like that. So that big laser right there, that's Asimo's bomb. Very useful. Okay, so I believe that's going to be the end of the tutorial. So now we're actually going to get into Echo's campaign. Taking a while to get started here. I'm just kind of running my mouth. So yeah, this is one of the background tracks I kind of don't like. Oops, I just accidentally used her bomb. I always do that starting off because the bomb's on the A button. What's cool about her character, um... She has some of the fastest movement and the smallest hitbox. And then she has this really powerful shotgun that's short range but does incredible damage up close. So it's fun to use. She also has that little mine I just put out that's slow but does heavy damage. So she's got a lot of offense and she's very agile. And she also has very low health. Uh, the only reason I have five health down here is because I've upgraded uh, all the characters to have more health. I think she starts with only like two. So yeah, she's um, actually someone I'd recommend for like more advanced players or specifically going for a score run. But her shotgun is a lot of fun just because it, like you can see, it one shots most stuff. And uh, even just her regular gun right here is really powerful. It doesn't have very much spread to it, but it's powerful. Okay, right there, uh, at the end of every level, you'll see those two bots that come down. And they usually give you an option of either getting two extra health back or getting one extra bomb. So right now, since my health is full, I got the bomb. This is the first boss on new mode called Dread Feller. And the order of bosses in the levels actually changes depending on difficulty too, which is kind of cool. You know, obviously in shoot 'em ups, one of the best aspects about them is the different bosses. And this game does not disappoint in that regard. Uh, there's not a lot, because there's not a lot of levels, but the bosses are cool, they're fun, and uh, their patterns are actually pretty easy to learn, which is can be refreshing, depending on how hardcore you are into shooters. Uh, I know hardcore people don't want to be able to learn the patterns too easily, but for casuals and people that are kind of in the middle, like myself, uh, it's nice to be able to learn the patterns without too much trial and error.
Oh yeah, there's only two sections. I forgot, on lower difficulties, the bosses also have less sections, too. Okay, let's see. 92% shot down rate. That's not great. You want to be above 95. Um, you get a lot of points for any leftover bombs, as you can see. That's a good way to get a high rank. Um, you also get points for HP leftover, but not near as much. So if you're going for score runs, and it comes down to either taking a hit or using a bomb to clear the screen of bullets, um, you should just take the hit and keep shooting, because the bomb's worth way more points. I ended up getting a double S rating here, which is pretty good, but the best rating is triple S. It goes triple S, double S, S, then A, B, C, down to D is the lowest. <coughs> okay, right here is one of the things I was talking about that makes this shooter unique and fun. Um, down at the bottom left, you can see it says 12, can buy supplies or upgrade. Basically, that means I've earned 12 upgrade points, and I can either use those here to get, like, say, plus one HP for one point, or plus one bomb for three points, or you can save those till the end of your run when you either die or finish, and you can use those for the persistent upgrades that last between um, levels. So, I believe my HP is still full, and uh, I don't necessarily need a bomb, so I'm going to save all these, hit B. Go on to the next level here. Having the different characters combined with the stuff like the different upgrades and the way they persist between plays makes this a really fun shooter to me. And it's a lot more options than just replaying for a high score, which is all a lot of sh shoot em ups offer. The other thing is, it does have some story, but I like the fact it doesn't shove the story in your face. Um, you only get the one CG intro the first time you play on normal difficulty, and that's it. After that, you kind of have to go looking for it if you want more story. So that's cool for people that are like, you know, I don't give a damn about the story. I just want to play. I just want to shoot some shit. But they got you covered, man. I also have a nice upgrade on here already. Um, whenever I hold down left trigger to go into the more precision mode, it also sucks in any upgrades that are flying in the air. So that's nice, I don't have to go after them. That will definitely save you a lot of hits in the game. Um, so I really recommend grabbing that upgrade ASAP. I always like any game that lets you get a thing where it automatically pulls in stuff for you. It helps relieve me of that kind of anxiety of not picking up certain things on the ground which I get in games like Mario, or I mean pretty much anything that has like coins, rings, whatever. If there's a chance you can miss them, they fade away, whatever. That stresses me out a bit, so I like not having to worry about it. Okay, I'm about to get to the second boss, and you're going to see again the two robots offering health and bombs. And let's see, I'm going to take... Actually, I actually want the health this time. Because this enemy, I don't need that much firepower. Herborgini. I love how they have the little intros. It gives the boss some extra personality, and I think that's cool. Ah, just got hit. As you can see, the risk-reward of charging up your energy versus just shooting is a big factor in here. Now, I actually have a lot of upgrades towards my characters. Normally, you'd be charging energy very slowly, so you wouldn't just be able to screw around and constantly charge your energy like I had been. But that is sort of what you want to work towards as you play through the game, is getting those energy charge upgrades. Because special abilities do a lot of damage, they get you more points, they get rid of bosses quicker so you don't get hit. So that's a definite goal, but yeah, early on with no upgrades, uh, energy charge is actually very slow. So there's a lot more regular shooting. Yeah, there we go, triple S, not bad. Okay, let's see these, um, uh, let's save the points for the upgrades.
Okay, see now this stage, this stage has some better music. It's a little more memorable and suits the tone. Now there are um, achievements or trophies related to getting 100% shot down on noob and normal difficulties. Which I already have those, so I'm not super concerned about it on here, but normally you'd be wanting to go for like 100% shot down. Um, that's how they are on Switch and Xbox. I believe the Steam version for PCs actually has a lot of extra trophies too in terms of getting all the upgrades. Uh, for the specific characters and all the little story elements that come later, which I'll show. And uh, I'm kind of curious why they didn't keep that in the achievements, but I'm just thinking maybe it's because um, they wanted to keep it simpler, the consoles versus the computer version. I'm not sure. Also, I don't know if you noticed, um, anytime I pick up the little energy gobules, or whenever I destroy an enemy with special abilities, little extra purple bullets fly out and hit other stuff. That's another upgrade I picked up that normally is not there. That's another thing that helps you chain uh, the special ability kills versus just the regular bullet kills. So that's another really helpful upgrade. Okay, let's see. Um, I'm going to take the bomb here because this is the last level on new difficulty. I'm going to pick the bomb this time instead of the HP. By the way, those little people down there, I'm told those are um, characters of the development team. The little civilians you see running in this level and in level 5 later. That's kind of cool. I like when development teams find ways to sneak themselves into games. Lord of War. This is one of my favorite bosses just because, you know, it's a giant robot. Giant robots are awesome. One of the big strategies in this game, um, there's generally a lot of time between the boss phases, so that's a really good time to be charging up your energy, and there's not going to be any crap on the screen. Ooh, he almost killed me. I'm kind of bad with this Echo character. Like I said, I think she's more for, like, advanced. Triple S, yay. Okay, so let's see how we did overall for noob difficulty. Triple S ranking, alright. Okay, so here is the upgrade screen I was talking about, the persistent upgrades. Uh, they go from you're playing anyone in campaign mode. Uh, as you can see, I already have a lot of them here. The main ones you want to go for is like the extra XP, uh, extra shooting damage, obviously, and then extra bombs and bomb capacity is good. The rest of them are kind of up to you. Uh, the first one I'll grab is this one here, sucking in all the items when low speed mode's turned on. That's very helpful. Uh, over on the left, you can see these are the character specific upgrades. And I already have all of them for Asimo and Samuel. I only have one for Echo. That's the shield that goes with the shotgun. It's kind of handy. And then Shin, I don't have any because I fucking hate him. 
he's an annoying character, and I don't even see the point of him. He seems like he would be uh, oriented for people that are like brand new to shooters, because he has a shield ability and this guardian thing he calls out, but his health is low, his damage is low, and you have to fully upgrade the leaf shield and the guardian for them to actually be useful, so I don't know, he just seems like a bad character to me compared to the other ones. So I'm going to go ahead and put uh, my 49 points towards this upgrade. So I still need several more points there. Okay, so that's a new difficulty playthrough with Echo. And I'm going to show you, I think I have a couple of her story elements I got. And you get the other story elements uh, from playing on higher difficulties. And once you play through on the medium difficulty, you get kind of a brief ending. And when you play through on the highest difficulty, you get a full ending for the character. And then I believe there's also an extra ending once you have all their story elements. But I can't be sure yet because there's a save bug that sometimes occurs and kept me from getting all the story elements. For anyone. Oh yeah, so this necklace right here talks about Echo's mother left her the necklace. She died giving birth to her, so she never knew her mother. She was brought up by her grandfather before his disappearance. She only saw him during a vacation. And this necklace actually has uh, a little bit to do with the story later on because it turns out uh, her grandfather is kind of an important character in here. Anyway, so the next character I'm going to show is Sam Hill, who's sort of like the main character <coughs> of the story, I guess you would say. Anyway, uh, this is Sam Hill's story. Winter in the north is cold, very cold, and there are things even chillier than this damned weather. By a stroke of luck, I met the doctor. He had such warm hands. The doctor took me in and gave me a home. Until that day, when that man appeared. Nothing that I could do. Damn it all! This anger has given me a new power. Alright, so that's the beginning of Sam Hill's story. Let's see, I also got a couple of story elements for him. What about his red scarf? He has this letter, which is someone that the person he talked about, uh, the doctor that took him in. This is a letter to him from one of his lab partners. And then, let's see, letter number two is a response to that. Uh, talking about when the doctor and Sam Hill were out on a fishing trip, they landed on this island with some natives, and it turns out this little island they land on, uh, that's also where the fourth character Shin is from. They had this meteorite that served as a power source. Uh, the little native animal Ewok looking things like Shin kind of worshipped it, but it turns out that meteorite has to do, it's like a power source that gets used later and it has something to do with the robot rebellion and it has to do with Asimo's uh, his source of power the robot you play as in here you'll see later anyway this is going to be the normal difficulty kind of the medium one do it with Sam Hill he has uh, his special moves are one of them he shoots a wave of fireballs, 
that you can upgrade where they penetrate through enemies through multiples and they fan out wider. Then he also has a katana move which is like melee range but it does heavy damage and you can upgrade it so that it goes twice which is pretty cool because um, it also stops bullets which makes it very useful. Alright, so that was his fireball right there. I mainly use his fireball for clearing stuff. Um, the katana I use sometimes for bosses or things like this that I know are going to be shooting a lot of bullets because it helps clear them out. In terms of agility, this guy is kind of like medium agility. Uh, medium damage output, although once you upgrade him some, his damage output goes up pretty quick. His agility stays about the same. His HP goes up decently. Like I said, I believe he's kind of like supposed to be the main character, like the main protagonist of this story, just based on how they do it. He's nice and agile in his speed mode, and he's also still nicely precise in his precision mode right here. And his weapon has like a medium spread to it, so that means you can do a little bit more damage if you're up close to an enemy, or if you want that spread, you go further back here, let the bullets spread out some. So yeah, he's just he's mostly medium all around, although once you put some upgrades, his offense goes up faster than everything else. <laughs> okay, right here I'm going to grab the bomb, and sometimes you might see me just fire off special moves. All I'm doing that for is to burn off this energy to get more bombs, because I know that there's a long time between these boss phases, so you have plenty of time to charge up more energy. Alright, so now we fight the Terror Cracker, which is a freaking weird name. call this a real shoot 'em up or especially not a bullet hell but again that's because we're on the lower difficulties once you see veteran and expert you'll understand the bullets get a lot faster and a lot more dense plus the other thing is I've played this a lot so I'm actually pretty good at dodging and I have a lot of character upgrades if you're just starting out it would be a little more difficult Buy an extra bomb, and that's save the other 15 points. These little UFO enemies you see, they're basically the cannon fodder of the game. They're definitely meant uh, more for you just to like build up your combo, your multiplier, and to get energy off of, rather than present a threat. Uh, there is an achievement on all versions of the game for killing a certain amount of them, but you'll get it really fast. It's not one of those achievements like you need to grind for, because there's so many of those in each level. After just a couple playthrough attempts, you'll have it. This, this one level is one before this boss. This is one of the only ones where that supply robot on the right gives you energy instead of a bomb. So, that's weird. Okay, I'm going to fight Dreadfeller again. This guy's patterns aren't too difficult. 
but I'm still going to use some bombs on him, because I don't want this to take forever. He doesn't have any particular weak point, you can kind of hit him anywhere, but it seems like you do a little bit more damage hitting him directly on that middle cannon part in this first phase. Okay, right there, I'm just going to fire off some energy to clear the way for some more energy recharge. And do it again. Oh, he was already in phase, good. I love this guy's second phase because he looks kind of like a G1 Transformer. Okay, and I just got hit like an idiot, nice. Okay, phase three. His patterns get a little more difficult. Uh, on my actual character, you can see the blue light in the middle. That's your actual hitbox, not the character itself. Which is nice because the characters are uh, shaped very differently. So it would be like a huge disadvantage to use Asimo versus Shin or Sam Hill because they have much smaller things. But Everyone's hitbox is actually the same size, so that's nice. Okay, um, I will... let's see. I guess I'll go ahead and buy one HP, and I'm going to save the rest of those points for the persistent upgrades later. Normally I kind of complain about this game's loading times, but it seems like it's actually loading faster today than normal. Makes me wonder if they did a update in the background. Okay, this level has the freaking music that I kind of do not like. Maybe what I call the worst music in the game, although it's still not horrible. But yeah, it just reminds me of like a terrible action movie. Made in late 80s, early 90s or something, I don't know. Maybe even set in Miami. Okay, I need to start being a little more careful. I'm kind of taking a lot of hits here. I guess because I'm running my mouth and playing at the same time. There is also an achievement um, for making it through a stage without getting hit at all. So if you're going to go for that on whatever platform, I'd recommend doing it on stage 2 on the noob difficulty. Or... Uh, stage 3 on normal difficulty, which is actually easier than doing it on stage 1 noob difficulty, which is counterintuitive, I suppose. Okay, this boss is going to be Turborgini, but before his first phase, we get our two supply robots, so I'm going to take the HP. Turborgini. I love those little intros. To me, they just give it the bosses like a lot of character. To the game character. Okay, I'm trying to rush through his first phase because unlike most bosses, um, his first phase actually has more difficult bullet patterns than some of his later ones. See, this phase is relatively easy. You can actually dodge 90% of the bullets just by staying in the middle of the screen, moving just a very little bit, so I like that. Ooh, 
ooh, single S. Okay, um, let's see, we're gonna do... Actually, nothing. We're gonna save all those. This stage uh, is one of the more interesting ones to me, both in terms of the way it looks <coughs> and the enemy assortment, because it actually introduces several new enemies all in the same stage, whereas each of the other stages you only get kind of like a couple new things before the boss. This one, there's several. So this one represents maybe the first big jump in difficulty. And you may not be able to tell because of my expert playing, but if you let these guys go for any length of time, there will be so much shit flying at you on the screen at once. Okay, now this supply robot right there, you see it dropped a scroll. That's actually going to be a new story element for this character. So that's how you get him. You get him by playing uh, the later levels on medium or higher difficulty. Okay, and as you can see right there, we're about to cross uh, a train. And if you've ever played any shoot 'em ups, you know that when you see a train, that means it's going to be a ton of enemies and a boss that has like many forms or phases to go through. So we have that to look forward to. This is one of the stages uh, when you really start getting a feel for the times that you need to use the high speed evasion mode or the lower speed precision dodge mode. Especially so you don't run into shit like I just did. And this is also one of those where it pays to have the upgrades that hitting stuff with your special abilities unleashes more bullets on the screen to hit more enemies that we can kind of chain them. Otherwise there's no way to cover enough stuff and you end up taking a lot more hits than I even I am. Oh, I've already taken like three. Okay, so let's see. I guess I'll take the HP. Yeah, this is one of the bosses where <clears throat> your choice is HP or energy instead of a bomb. So when I have that choice, I always take the HP unless I'm full because the extra energy, I can just charge it right here and I'll be full of energy anyway, so. Okay, and again, I'm just discharging that excess energy to make room so I can charge more and build towards that next bomb. The Roaring Steam! This is another one that doesn't have a definitive weak point. Um, you can hit it on either of the sidecars to destroy a couple extra guns, or do maybe a little more damage hitting this middle car. But basically, uh, anywhere you shoot, it's going to hit something and do some damage, which is nice. Because that way you don't have to worry about it being one of those bosses that you're so busy dodging, you're not getting any damage out to it. Ow, just got hit. Yeah, I forgot. This guy's second phase has a pretty difficult pattern because he starts crossing the bullets over like a true bullet hell. So this is when you start getting a taste of this game can actually do. This is another one where you have a pretty good amount of time between the phases to charge that energy. So you always want to be ready for that and be holding down the B button. Oh my god, I'm getting hit a lot by this guy. Might actually have to buy some HP for the next level. single S, not good. Okay, so now it's going to show that little story scroll I picked up. The wooden knife. A meticulously polished wooden knife as smooth as anything. Children like to play swordsmen and superheroes, and a wooden knife would make for a fine prop. 
Scientists are not known to be handy in general, but this one was clearly made with craftsmanship. So what it's talking about right there is that doctor slash scientist that adopted Sam Hill when he was little made him this wooden knife. And you find out later that that doctor is also um, Echo's grandpa and the creator of Asimo. So spoiler alert, I guess I maybe shouldn't just blurted that out. But I mean, hell, the story in a shoot 'em up's not the biggest thing, right? Okay, so we are going to take. Um, I'm going to buy one HP, one bomb, and I'm going to save the other 64 points for the upgrades later. Yeah, there's one of the little guys. Um, I believe they, like I said, are supposed to be the development team members and their family. So I think it's really cool they stuck that in there. Definitely seems like something I would do if I was making a game. Like you can see here, uh, the bullets are starting to pick up. There's more and more stuff on screen at once. Even when you destroy a lot, there's still more there. And it gets to the point that it's kind of impossible to destroy everything. So you have to start prioritizing. Which, I mean, it is possible. It's possible to get 100% shot down on any of the levels. But you have to be shooting in certain spots ahead of time. Because you don't have enough time on reaction. Even with full upgrades, you wouldn't be doing enough damage. But yeah, um, from this point on in the game, levels and difficulty, you definitely have to start prioritizing. Uh, what you're hitting with special abilities, what you're hitting with normal stuff, and whether you're using the high speed, or the precision, or just the medium speed maneuvers. Um, that These billboards right here I just destroyed, I believe there's some kind of easter egg related to those that I read about, but what I was reading, even though it was a Steam forum, um, it was in Chinese which is, I believe, the original developers of this game is a Chinese company, so um, the translation was rough, so I kind of lost interest and I didn't figure out the Easter egg, but apparently there is something there related to the billboards, and that's, that's pretty cool. Maybe later on I'll figure it out. Like, here's another billboard, this Hank Hill-looking guy. Oh, I do know right here, um, if you're going for 100% shot down, you have to wait for this purple carrier thing to release these little drone guys before you destroy it. Otherwise, you won't be able to get 100% shot down for this map. So I guess just keep that in mind if you're going for those achievements or trophies. Okay, I'm going to take the HP this time. Oops, I should have taken the bomb. I forgot this is level 5. Oh well. This is a pretty cool boss. It has some interesting phases to it. Um, since this is a slightly higher difficulty than when we faced it on Noob, it... This um, Lord of War robot is going to have an extra phase to it, called an Enrage Mode, so it's pretty badass. It doesn't necessarily make it harder, it just makes it where you have to kind of preserve your bombs a little bit better, which I'm not doing, I'm just using them because I want to get through his first phase as fast as possible, it's kind of rough. There we go. Okay, now we're in phase two. Like I said, again, his patterns aren't too bad. As far as bullet hells go, this is relatively tame, but it can be difficult. Ah, there you go. As soon as I open my mouth, I get a hit. Okay, so now we'll go to his phase three which is faster. But as you notice, he lost his big armor part, and as he gets these other weapons, he actually also takes more damage in this phase. So that helps make up for the fact that the bullet spread is going to be faster, a little more dense. And so there's three different types of bullets on the screen at once. Pretty rough. But I like the fact that each of the different bullet types has its own shape, so you know roughly how it's going to move. Okay, now we get this fourth phase that's only because we're on the medium difficulty. You wouldn't be getting that on new. 
And I think that's another interesting aspect of this game that makes it unique among shoot 'em ups. There we go. Ooh, another single S. I'm not doing so great with him. Let's see what we got overall. Okay, overall double S. That's not too bad. And we got 98 upgrade points. So, we go ahead and finish this upgrade. And then I'm going to come over here. And... Oh, thank you very much, buddy. My nephew just dropped off some cigarettes. Thank you very much, sir. And let's see. We're going to take... I guess I'm going to start working towards this extra shield upgrade. Because uh, the way it is right now, you get one chance a level. Uh, whenever you're about to take damage, you will actually automatically deploy an energy shield. And right now that goes for 6 seconds. So I'm working towards this upgrade where it goes for 10 seconds. Because even though it's only once a level, that comes in very handy on the highest difficulty, fighting the last couple bosses. Because they are noticeably more difficult than the first couple. So now we're going to... I'm going to show you uh, my favorite character, Asimo the Robot. I'm going to start off with his story thing, and then go through the third difficulty, which is called Veteran, and you'll be able to see all seven of the levels in the game. There is one more difficulty above that, called Expert, but it's the same seven levels, and the only difference is uh, enemy placement and bullet patterns are slightly different. Other than that, it's pretty much the same, and I have unlocked it before, but unfortunately that was also the first time I encountered the save bug, so it didn't save, so at some point I need to unlock it again. So anyway, here's Asimo's story. My memory data goes back 1,174 days. However, it has only been 42 days since I was first activated. You know full well that you're a fake. You stole that memory from someone else. To me, memory is only a batch of data. What does the truth really mean to me? You have no past. You never even existed. I can clearly remember missing my friends. A love for beauty. Grief for losing my family. Your existence is absolutely worthless. <laughs> Shut up. Who are you? So that kind of shadowy robot figure, you can see, uh, he was the boss in the very first level, and he's also going to show up at the very end of the game. I'm still not exactly sure who he is. Some people think he's Echo's grandpa, and that doctor scientist that adopted Sam Hill. But I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so this is going to be Asimo's campaign on veteran difficulty, which this is initially the highest. Like I said, you have to unlock Expert. Uh, maybe I will in this playthrough, I don't know. We'll see. I have Asimov fully upgraded, and I have a lot of the persistent upgrades, so maybe I can make it all the way through. I've definitely... I've done it a few times, and I've got some good score runs too, but sometimes, um... I don't know, maybe I'll just try to not run my mouth so much so I don't get hit. See how it goes. But this time you're actually going to see all seven levels of the game, and you're going to see a lot more bullets from the enemies. This is when it actually turns into a bullet hell. 
Although again, it's not near as bad as some other bullet hells. This is actually a really good entry shoot 'em up. Okay, I'm taking a lot of hits here. I need to pay attention to what the hell I'm doing. I forget that Asimo, since he is the slowest, um, I need to be using his high speed dodge more. I like his special abilities because that laser satellite he fires out moves independently of you, so it's nice that you can put it somewhere where you know there's going to be a lot of bullets, and it has damage going out, but you don't have to worry about taking damage in, so that's nice. Right here I'm going to go ahead and take this HP, since I already got hit a lot, and I'm at max bombs. And then I'm going to fire off one of those, so I can start building more energy. Terror Cracker! His little satellite lasers remind me of like the fins and the bits that uh, Gundam has towards the end when they're in space and everyone's using psychic controlled fin funnel things for extra laser damage. Single S. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and buy one HP and one bomb. And you'll notice that the levels are in a slightly different order as well on the highest difficulty. It seems like enemies also have uh, a bit more health at this higher difficulty, but it's hard to judge because I always play with different characters at different points, so it's hard to tell since the destruction rate changes so much based on the different characters and the different weapons they have. Dread Feller. So you see here the bullet pattern is faster and there's more of them, more different projectile types at once. But again, I like the fact that they have different shapes. So that lets you know basically 
the speed they're going to move and the density. So it makes it easy to learn. Or at least easier than a lot of shoot 'em ups. Transformer G1 phase. Okay, that wasn't too bad. I usually get hit a little bit more by him. But I got no bombs left, so that's not good. Double S rating, that's not bad. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to buy a bomb. Then I'm going to buy this thing that's 1 HP and 1 bomb. Even though it's expensive at 6 points, um, I'm probably going to need it because it's higher than Now you notice there's that slight slowdown in the game, uh, whenever you get a bunch of pickups at once. That's the only slowdown I've seen at all in the game at any time, including uh, whenever you're doing local two-player mode. So, that's not bad. But it'd be better if there was like no slowdown at all, but considering this is a multi-platform release uh, by a small team of independence, you know, definitely let it slide. If it was a triple-A, I might complain. Thankfully, this is like the shortest stage in the game, because I really don't like that background music. Quirky and bothersome. Right there, I'm just blowing off more excess energy. Um, right here, since I'm at full HP, I'm gonna grab the bomb. <coughs> Turborgini! using my bombs to get rid of that guy really quick because his bullet patterns in the third phase are difficult. I'm trying to keep as much HP as I can going forward because I'm going to need all that extra HP in stage 6 and 7. I get hit a lot. Ooh, 100% shot down. There we go. That's what I should have been doing all along. But again, it's hard to do well and run my mouth. Triple S. Okay, so we are going to do... One bomb, and save the rest of those points. This level is really cool. It has 
different kind of Middle Eastern sounding music and totally different aesthetic to the level, which I like. Ow, oh, I already took a hit. Nice. Also, as you can see, they introduced more enemy types right away. Way more bullets on the screen. Now you see that, that big robot uh, walking tank thing that I was fighting, once you do all the hits to it and it quote unquote blows up, the rest of it just walks off. That always kind of annoys me in shooters, when there's an enemy that after you finish fighting it, it just leaves, rather than actually blowing up. It's just kind of a little peeve of mine. I always feel like I need to fully blow up everything, you know? And that hovercraft you just saw pull off, that's going to be the actual boss. And I like it when... Uh, Shooters have a thing where you can see the upcoming boss somewhere earlier in the level. Kind of see it in the background or whatever. I always think that's kind of cool, like foreshadowing. Oh, I'm probably going to have to fight that. Oh, it's tough. That's a bull raid. So many bull raids. Okay, that's racist. And again, this is another situation where you need to let that carrier enemy uh, release its actual drones before you destroy it, or else you can't get a uh, full shot down 100% if that's what you're going for. Just keep that in mind. Ah, shit, I accidentally hit the energy guy instead of the HP guy. That just means I'll have to buy some HP after this level. War Gears the third. War Gears three. Because there's three forms of it and it's made up of like three bots. Ah. Like how you see the little robots get out there and they run towards the craft thing. It's funny. Here you see the little robots get out again. And the third guy rescues them. Yeah! Okay, so I got a couple bombs remaining. That's not bad. But only 2 HP, that is bad. Definitely gonna need more, so... I'm gonna buy 1 HP there, and then buy this other HP with the bomb. Still have 70 upgrade points left, that's not too bad.
definitely gotta grab the HP there, because I'm only down to four. The Roaring Stain. Here's the long transition between the next phase, which gives you plenty of time to charge up a lot of energy. I notice that you don't keep any energy between levels. The only way you can start the next level with uh, more than four energy is if you buy that between the levels. So I'm going to do HP and a bomb and I'm going to buy another HP and a bomb even though that's a lot of points. Like I said, I think I'm going to need them. I'm about to get to stage six and it's going to start getting a bit more difficult.
Okay, that wasn't too bad. No bombs remaining, though. That's not good. Nine. Four HP. So now we're going to be going into the last stage, which actually has two bosses you have to fight. So, I'm going to grab an HP, and a bomb, and another HP, and another bomb. Uh, I'm going to skip... Actually, screw it. I'll take the full energy, too. Okay, hopefully I can make it all the way through this and at least show the last boss, if not beat it. Music's definitely better on this level. This level would definitely take some serious practice to be able to get 100% shot down. Because some of these enemies are in and out so quick. Just come in and drop a ton of bullets you know, like very quickly off screen. So I would have to seriously practice to get 100% shot down here. The highest I've gotten is 96% on this level. Okay, I want to destroy that thing really quick because its bullet patterns are insane. I'd rather just use extra energy, get it destroyed, so I don't die. This is another boss where uh, there's usually kind of a lot of time between stages, so you have a lot of time to build up more energy, which is good because you need it. Okay, now we fight Big Dora, as opposed to that smaller Dora we fought earlier. Like this one.
No. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and spend the points to continue, just so we can hopefully make it to the actual final boss. Crap, I forgot to save a bomb for this part. Okay, now we fight the actual last boss. Question mark, question mark, question mark. This guy's difficult just because he moves around a lot. He doesn't necessarily have the hardest bullet patterns out there. No, He was almost dead. Okay, so that's stage 7. Didn't quite make it, but that's okay. That's, uh, he had one more form, which actually goes down really quickly, even though it shoots out crazy bullet patterns. And then you see a brief uh, kind of story ending, but I don't think it's the full ending, because I think to get the full ending, you have to have all their story elements and then beat it on Expert. So anyway, let me go ahead and finish getting this upgrade. Okay, and I still have 18 points, so let me put those towards... Go towards this one, because it's cheaper. So I need 45. Okay, so now, I'm going to see if I can get my nephew to help me show you two-player local mode. And if not, then I'll show you arcade mode, which arcade mode, um, you play, you have none of the persistent upgrades, your character starts out basic, but then between each level, there are some different upgrades you can buy that apply towards the levels after that, but then after you finish your arcade run, they go away. So it's kind of like halfway between being a mode for purists and a mode for people that want progression. So it's pretty cool. I mean, the people that are actual, like, one-hit one coin clear purist. They can always just avoid getting the upgrades. You don't have to take them. You don't have to buy any of them. So that's them. Okay, let me go see if I can grab my nephew and we'll do some two player. Okay, I did get my nephew, he agreed to do it, so we are going to do some two-player. 
Okay, good. Is that the one that has batteries in it? Yes. Okay, sync it to my Xbox. Hit your sync button. Uh, I gotta find mine. You hit it. Hit it again. Hit it and hold it down. There it goes. Sink. Sink That's my nephew, uh, also known as Neck Romancer. Okay, now let's see if we can do two player. Okay, and we'll do it, I'll put it on the lower mode, so it's just three levels. Okay, see if you can move around and pick a character. You should be 2P. Okay, hang on. I guess I gotta pick mine first. Um, who do you want to be out of the four? They have, uh, the guy, Sim. You wanna be the, okay. Then I will be, I'll be Shin, just so I can show him. Oh, he sucks. Okay, can you move yours now? Hit your start button. And now try moving. Uh, hit. Oh no, never mind. Okay, can you pick it now? No? Weird. Okay, let me figure this out. I know what we'll do. Let me hook you up with a cable, and that'll work. Yeah, sorry, this cable's really short. Yeah. Okay, yeah, plug it in. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna pause the stream real quick so I can restart the game. Okay, there we go. Now it's recording again. Okay, this time it should work. We'll see. Oh, fuck. I just signed in. Damn it. Yeah, all right. Hopefully all that doesn't set the stream. But if it was, I'll just record it again, because this is like my fifth attempt anyway. So I might just have to do a six. Wait, what? Yeah, I've, I've been having a lot of trouble <laughs> trying to get this video recorded. There's always some little different thing that goes wrong. Because of me. No, not because of you. Oh my god, and his name is you. That's okay. Let's see if we can do this. Okay, I'm gonna pick Shin. Okay, now you can pick it. Okay, good. So now I can finally show off this two player mode where I'm gonna play as Shin, the character I freaking hate, just so I can show him. And Necromancer, my nephew, is gonna be Asimo, the robot. Uh, this is your shoot button. Uh, this is your bombs that you have limited of. And once you build up energy, you can use these for like super moves. Mainly, you're just going to be holding down X.
we gotta fight the evil tank dread feller. Like the weirdest name ever. Yep, now it's gonna be a transformer. Yeah, you're doing good. That's good dodging. Wow, well, we got 99% shot down. That's not bad. A rating. Just like all the A's you get in school. Okay, I'm gonna buy a bomb. I think I think we both get that bomb. But they're so helpful. I gotta pick up your bombs and drops. There we go. Mission failed. Mission failed. No. That's okay. We did good. No, it's been 98 minutes, see? Almost two hours. Okay. Okay, now, uh, what is this? Oh, these are upgrades for Necromancer, okay. So you can just, if you want to buy some upgrades, buy them. You have nine points to spend, and those points on there show you all the things. What is this? That one is, uh, it lets you hold one extra bomb. General means upgrades will apply to all the characters. And then if you use the triggers, you can go down and pick upgrades if you just want them for a certain character. But yeah, all these general ones, they apply for everyone. And don't ever use this guy. That guy sucks. He's like a stupid raccoon in a mask. Wait, what do you... Wait, so... How, how do you pick it? To I'm not going to do general. Use the triggers? Oh, sorry, I have to do it. Okay, there you go. So that's the upgrades for the robot. Yeah, you only have nine points. You can't afford his upgrades. So here, just get um, get one of those that you can afford. Just whichever one you want. They're actually all good. So because you can afford the bomb one, you can afford the extra shooting damage, you can afford the extra health. And I think that's it. That's all you can buy for right now. I have unlocked. Yep. I it. It just did 8% extra shot damage. And then the other three points, you can just put in towards something. You won't be able to get it all now. But you can just get some. Get off, I know, they got like a ton of them. And you can't spend Robux to get more. No! <laughs> okay, alright, now, uh, me.
Okay, so I'm just gonna show the credits now. Um, yeah, so don't sign out yet. Let me. <laughs> you think you can read it all? I don't know. It's, most of it's Chinese. It's made by a Chinese company. Wao Jing, Chen Kuang, Lin Ming Yang, Wang Peng, Lu Kang, Chen Dong, Wang Jinwei, Wang Guan, Yang Yu. Now, see, I know that guy, Warwick Giles. He's actually kind of a semi-famous actor. He's a British actor. So that's kind of cool they got him. Special thanks to Bashan and Yin Jumeng and Wang Wei. All right, so that's the credits. Thank you very much for helping me, nephew. And that's going to be the end of this video. Let me shut off the broadcast.